Welcome back to the Ortho Time Machine episodes, where we explore pivotal moments and game-changing innovations in orthopedic surgery. I'm Saqib Rahman, and today we'll journey through the life and legacy of Dr. Paul Harrington, whose work in spinal instrumentation changed the field forever. You've probably heard of the Harrington Rod. It was the first widely successful spinal implant designed to treat severe scoliosis and spinal deformities, but the story of how it came to be and the man behind it is as remarkable as the device itself. Before Harrington's innovation, scoliosis was often managed with rigid body casts, prolonged bed rest, and traction. As you can imagine, these methods were not only uncomfortable, but also largely ineffective in severe cases. It was clear that a transformative solution was needed. Enter the ingenuity and unwavering commitment of Dr. Harrington. Let's dive in. Paul Randall Harrington was born on September 27, 1911 in Kansas City, Kansas. An outstanding student and athlete, he excelled in basketball, leading his team to three consecutive Big Six Conference Championships during his time at the University of Kansas. This early exposure to teamwork and leadership would later shape his approach to surgery. After earning his medical degree in 1939, Harrington served in the U.S. Army Medical Corps during World War II as an orthopedic surgeon. Familiar story if you've heard our last few episodes. His experiences treating injured soldiers fueled his interest in finding better solutions for spinal injuries. After the war, Harrington returned to Houston, Texas, where he began treating patients with poliomyelitis, a condition often leading to severe scoliosis. He quickly recognized the limitations of existing treatments, such as bracing and fusion techniques pioneered by Dr. Russell Hibbs and Dr. Fred Albee. These traditional treatments were just not particularly effective. So he was determined to find a more effective solution, and he partnered with Thorkild Engen, an engineer, to design a device that could correct spinal deformities while providing internal fixation. And after years of experimentation, they developed what came to be known as the Harrington Rod, which used a system of ratchet rods and hooks to mechanically distract and straighten as well as stabilize the spine. So Harrington first presented his invention at the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons in 1958. However, his radical approach was met with skepticism, um, which you can imagine. Some colleagues even questioned his professional standing, but despite the criticism, Harrington remained undeterred. In his words, quote, the only way to achieve progress is to challenge conventional wisdom, unquote. Over the next few years, Harrington refined his technique and began training other surgeons and by 1962, his methods started gaining wider acceptance, and the Harrington Rod eventually became the standard for treating severe scoliosis. The Harrington Rod marked a turning point in spinal surgery. Prior to its invention, scoliosis was a debilitating condition, often leaving patients wheelchair-bound. With this new device, surgeons could achieve dramatic corrections, both improving function and appearance. One of Harrington's most famous cases involved a young girl with severe scoliosis, and after her surgery, she, she stood several inches taller, she could walk without pain for the first time in years, and stories like these spread rapidly, cementing Harrington's reputation as a pioneer. Now, while revolutionary, the Harrington rod definitely had its limitations. Uh, it was effective in correcting coronal deformities, uh, but it lacked the ability to address sagittal alignment, leading to complications like flat back syndrome. Uh, and over time, new systems such as the uh, Luque rods and Cottrell Dubosset instrumentation built on Harrington's foundation offered improved three dimensional correction. Dr. Mark Asher, one of Harrington's contemporaries, reflected, quote, 
Without Harrington's groundbreaking work, modern spinal instrumentation would not exist, unquote. Paul Harrington's contributions extended beyond his inventions. He was a creating member of the Scoliosis Research Society and dedicated much of his career to teaching and mentoring young surgeons. He was the SRS president from 1972 to 1973. Harrington passed away in 1980, but his legacy lives on. His innovations paved the way for the sophisticated spinal instrumentation systems we use today, benefiting millions of patients worldwide. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the life of Paul Harrington and the revolution of spinal instrumentation. In our next episode, we'll explore the history of fracture fixation and the development of modern plating techniques. You don't want to miss that. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, share, leave a review. Until next time, I'm Sake Brahman, and this is the OrthoClips podcast series, Ortho Time Machine Episodes. Take care.